hello again and welcome to more amateur radio fun fun with amateur radio with vk6 cs when will the fun ever stop to quote the charismatic jamie heineman from mythbusters and it's a very good question it could stop in about five minutes <laughs> or less okay well um question i've heard on the air and seen on the internet is coaxial switches can you switch um, two or three radios to one antenna normally would people would switch two or three antennas to one radio the potential problem being if you've got two or three radios connected to the ports on the switch and one antenna will the other two radios have their receivers damaged by the radio that's doing the transmitting because it could be transmitting 100 watts could be transmitting 400 watts so I thought first of all it's an interesting question um, why would you actually want two or three radios connected to one antenna because presumably the two or three radios are going to be doing the same job um, but then it occurred to me that there are people that would like to do comparisons you know they might have two radios side by side and want to compare them on transmit as well as receive because so obviously you could use an ordinary coaxial switch to connect two or three radios together if you're only doing a receive test you're not putting any energy transmit energy through it um, and then I thought well you know how how would you get enough isolation across the ports to actually run transmit power through it and I looked at um, some of the specifications for some of these switches some are 50 dB port isolation some are 60 I think I saw one which was 70 which is sort of getting a little bit better but that's really not enough isolation to run two or three radios uh, into one antenna through a switch it's not I wouldn't chance that so what I thought I'd do is I'd have a crack at making a switch that would do that so you could plug two or three radios in and have them transmitting and each radio not bothering the other one so I thought what's the easiest way to do it easiest and cheapest you know a radio ham we're notorious for you know being very careful with money so um, I thought automotive relays if we're talking about frequencies up to 30 megs and probably get away without the actual switch being coaxial so I thought, well, what it could do, there are some relays available from a local electronic shop that are single pole, single pole double throw. That means um, there's one pole at rest. It will be normally closed. When you energize it, it will be normally open. So that one pole at the bottom will connect to that one at rest and that one when it's energized. And these are only eight bucks 1500 volt ac rated silver plated contacts they're for, for automotive automotive use and i thought that would probably do the trick hang on a second i bought some uh, coconut milk or coconut water earlier on from the supermarket i went to get some milk and i bought coconut water so i had it on special big pile of it and um i thought well okay i'll buy a couple of cartons now it doesn't say on the carton whether you're supposed to drink it or rub it on but uh, we'll give it a crack anyway. Hmm. Maybe you are supposed to rub it on. That doesn't taste particularly coconutty, to be perfectly honest. But um, you know what? I can't be bothered to uh, go and make a cup of tea. So if I collapse, call an ambulance, send it to VK6CS, and tell them what the problem is. I have consumed coconut water. Actually, this stuff's got to be harmless. It, uh, I, I'm sure I read somewhere that if you were stuck on a desert island and someone needed a blood transfusion you can actually infuse them with coconut water and it will do the same job now don't try that or if you do certainly don't mention my name but um, google it if you're thinking of going on a remote expedition to an island where you might find coconuts and uh, you might save someone's life it's actually not bad and you can drink it too apparently right now what I had in mind I bought this um, I bought this whiteboard from the uh, reject shop for eight bucks comes with a pen and a sponge doesn't come with the water you've got to supply your own water but I thought okay well this might be this might be useful for doing some doodles so I thought I'd just try it see how see how it goes so you've got three radios
R1, R2, R3, and we're going to connect those to the common points on our relays. The normally closed points will go to ground. Diddy, diddy, diddy. Like that. Please, nobody make any comments about Rolf Harris. A few years ago, I would have been flattered. Not now. Okay. Now, normally, actually, we'll show radio one. <clears throat> it's being connected to the antenna. So we'll have radios two and three going to ground. Radio one going to the antenna. Have the normally open contacts connected like that to the antenna. And there's the antenna. Okay. So, as you can see by that, oh, I have to stand up, of course. I've forgotten about that part. So you've got radio, radio one, radio two, radio three. Now these are the automotive relays. And we wire the radios to the common. The output of the radios will go to the common. So these will be the these uh, these will be SO239 sockets, of course, on the, on the actual panel of the thing will be wired to the commons. The antenna will be paralleled across the normally opens, normally open contacts on the relays, and the normally closed relay contacts will go to ground. So there may very well be 100 watts of energy here, but this is going to ground inside the relay. Now as long as these are re a reasonable distance apart, the isolation should be quite good. And I thought, well I might wire the relays across the top, so I won't use, um, they're supposed to have crimp lugs on them, but I think I'll solder to them. And I'll solder to them with um, RG58, simply because it's flexible, it's easy to use in a little enclosure. So I'm going to use coaxial cable to connect the, the sockets to the co connections on the relays. And from the sockets to the uh, sorry for, yeah from the antenna socket to the uh, relays on the um, on the normally opens. Now this would be pretty cheap to build, um, and if it doesn't uh, if it doesn't work in the fashion, if it doesn't work like this, uh, then you can always put the radio there and uh, use it as a, as an antenna switch. So I thought well let's have a crack at it because it might actually be good enough to do the job and I've looked on YouTube and I've looked on the internet and I haven't seen anyone doing anything like this and it's it's a pretty simple thing to do and yet the question is still asked so I thought well let's give it a crack and how would you actually switch these well simple enough you just get a little get a little rotary switch you know 12 volts coming in from your, you've got to have 12 volts for your radio supply anyway. Now you've got 12 volts coming in with a little plug. I'll show you the bits and pieces in a minute. I'll just check the time on the recording. And that will go to the relay coils. That'll be relay one, relay two, relay three. And uh, actually, yeah, we'll better mark that, haven't we? So better mark that. Uh, actually, no, I think that's pretty self explanatory. Okay, so then you would have your rotary switch going to ground. We'll show that going to position one because we have relay one showing us being energised at the moment. That will come down there, and that will come down there, and go into there. And uh, just to stop any nasty spikes getting back into our 12 volt power supply, our radio power supply, stick a quench diode across the across the input, the 12 volt input to ground. So so you can see there, you can just use a very small little rotary switch capable of switching the 12 volts through the through the relay coils. You don't need a big heavy switch because it's not switching any RF. It's going to energise whichever relay is appropriate. Whichever relay is not energised will be at rest. So the antenna contact is um, not going to be connected to anything. The, the radio is actually going to be connected, the antenna input to the radio is going to be connected to ground. 
Um, we don't need to put a diode across each coil because what we're protecting here is our 12 volt supply that runs your radio. So we just stick one diode across the 12 volt input and that will stop any spikes getting back into your, into your power supply. So that's it. Should be a fairly simple thing to build. Yeah, hang on, let's get the... Uh, just check the time. What did I do with the top of the pen? It's already floating around in my coconut juice. Um, that's a bit annoying, I'll have to find that otherwise the pen will dry up. Ouch! That was the scope I just banged my knee on. If you're wondering what that, that wasn't the sound effect. How are we doing? 10 minutes. Okay, so we've got 10 minutes left. Alright, so let's just put that out of the way. And look at the bag of bits. Oh, wait a minute, there it is. That's why I can't find it. <laughs> what am I always saying about this big amateur radio? Right. Now, we have here a bag of bits that I, uh, that I bought, and I've got my battery down there as well. <laughs> I'm tripping over the battery and banging my knee on the scope, but never mind. If you were interested in watching professional slick presentations, you would have turned off long before now, so I've got nothing to worry about on that score. Okay, there's the enclosure. Oh, I also bought some, this is for the uh, this is for the portable radio project, some 50, uh, 50 amp connectors. There's going to be one on the battery, uh, one on the um, charger, and one on the radio. That's for something else. But I picked them up while I was there. Now, I only bought one of these relays, which was a mistake. I'm going to have to go back and get the others. I thought I'd, I'd measure the... Um, cross-contact isolation with one relay and then I thought well <clears throat> I really want to do that so that uh, under the conditions that the relay is going to be operating in so I'm going to need at least two and they're going to have to be wired up coaxially. Um, I'll just try adjusting the camera angle because you don't really need to see me I don't know if you can but you don't really need to see me you need to see the bits so I'll just adjust that camera angle That's better. There we go. Now you can... There we go. Whoops. That's much, much better. Right. Actually, maybe a little bit more throw on that because you might just need to... There we go, that's better. Zoom in, thank you. Now, as you can see, that's a fairly small rotary switch. I'm only going to put, I'm going to put four relays in it. Four of these relays. These are the automotive relays. Don't know if you can read that. That's the part number from uh, uh, the um, electronic shop up the road. And um, I'm sure if you Google that, it will just come up with the uh, the store. As I say, it's rated 1500 volts AC across the contacts, silver plated contacts, and uh, that's the common. That's the normally closed. That's the normally open. So whether these are fur far further apart than a decent ceramic rotary switch, who knows? But um, we'll uh, we'll soon see when we when we fire it up. And as I say, if we don't get enough isolation through the ports. It can always be used as an antenna switch, so yeah, it's not a waste of time building this at all. Now this little rotary switch only needs four positions, and you can adjust this. I, I'm just taking it out of the bags, so I don't know how you do it, but I read in the blurb before I bought it that you can you can actually move, there's a little peg that you move around in there, and you can select anything from you know, 2 to 12 positions or on, the, on your switch. So I only need four, so I'll adjust that, so there's only four positions on it. So that's that. Now, I'm going to use uh, SO239s 
it's only HF after all and uh, these are quite convenient connectors to use I uh, wouldn't use these uh, for VHF and UHF, I'd use them um, in connectors. But um, for this little project, uh, these things are fine. I like, to use, I like to use these because you don't have to fiddle around with the bulkhead mounting with four bolts. You can just get your, get your step drill, drill a little hole, get your step drill. In fact, I'll probably do a video, I'll show you me making it. Get your little step drill and then just drill through until the hole's that big and then plop them in. That's how, that's how hard it is, literally. So much, much nicer, much, much nicer socket to use. Comes with a solder tag as well to solder the, the braid for the coax. So as I said, I'm going to use RG58 on these on the inside. A little power socket there. So that, put a red and black wire, that would go to the 12 volt power supply that runs your radio and there's a little socket that will go in the enclosure to uh, allow the relays to be powered. I've got a diode kicking around somewhere, I didn't need to buy one. I've got a bo box of bits and pieces. So that's, that's, that's the, um, and uh, if you're going to do it, get, get, a, get a plug with the right length for the socket so that it looks neat. You know, when you put your plug in, it actually looks like a bought one rather than, uh, you know, some of them you see, they look like that. Which looks fudgy. Okay. Right, so we'll keep those together so we don't lose them. But that's a 12 volt input and one antenna socket, four sockets there for the radios. This little, inco little enclosure was, uh, I think it was $19. Haven't seen it yet. There wasn't a uh, there wasn't one on a shelf I could actually look at. There was only this uh, this one in a box which was all wrapped up, but I think it's going to be suitable. It's got some vents in the side, not that I'm expecting it to get hot. That's going to be the front, so there'll be a rotary knob on the front and the back panel. Yeah, little bag with some rubber feet in there and some screws to put them on with. The holes are there, it's even pre-drilled. So put the rubber feet on. Very nice little uh, very nice little enclosure for the project. Very happy with that. Now um, it's gonna go like that. So uh, have we got enough room? Have we got enough room for our sockets? One, two, oh yeah, plenty of room. Three, four. I'm going to have one on its own over there for the radio, like that. We'll keep it up in the corner out of the way, just in case I want to add any more sockets. So go and put it there. Can't, you know, can't do anything more with it. Put it there, so that uh, if we want to use the box for anything else, we can. Or you know, change the functionality of the box, or add. Uh, another radio or, or whatever we want to do we can put another relay in there. I'll do the same thing with the relays I'll bunch the relays up so that um, uh, so the relays will go in there sort of like that I'll put four of them fairly close together and allow enough room for more to be added if required so just position them logically you know teaching my granddad to suck eggs but um, the it's just uh, you know people are new to the hobby um, and um, it just might be uh, might be uh, something fun to make. Well, thank you very much for watching. This is part one. Uh, part two will actually be making it. Hope you found it interesting.